I'm Matthew Kosnick, the convener of Macquarie University's Reef Evolution and Dynamics class. Part of this class, we spend a week on the Southern Great Barrier Reef at Heron Island, where we have the opportunity to get up close and personal with one of the world's greatest reef ecosystems. Not only do we talk about and study this ecosystem here on Heron Island, but actually we look at the entire Phanerozoic history of coral reefs and their ecosystems through time. Welcome to Biol 379. I'm Sarah and this is Michael and we assist Matt in the teaching of the Heron Island Reef Evolution and Dynamics Unit. The best way to reach the island is by taking a short flight up to Gladstone, Queensland and then transferring to the marina to catch the Heron Island catamaran. On a sunny day, the crossing is absolutely spectacular. When you reach Heron Island, you'll be greeted by our staff and those from the University of Queensland and be given a brief tour of the grounds to familiarise yourself. We then get you quickly settled into your accommodation as that very afternoon you'll be working out on the reef following a safety induction and of course a delicious lunch. Straight after lunch, you will be assigned to your groups and your tutor for the rest of the week. You will then head out for a reconnaissance reef walk to familiarise yourself with the reef at low tide. Your tutor will explain to you the basics of reef zonation and what you should be looking for on this walk. Walking out, you must be careful where you step so as not to damage this delicate ecosystem. You will begin to collect samples of different types of red, green and brown algae, which we will use for one of the tasks back in the lab. With the help of viewing buckets and your identification charts, you will have the opportunity now to really get to know the different types of coral, algae and various other inhabitants such as the holothurian or sea cucumber. You can also expect to see beautiful sea stars and if you're lucky, a plesia or the sea hare. But you must be careful with these guys as they have a colourful defence mechanism. This ink secretion, coloured by a diet of red algae, is an effective deterrent against predators. By the end of the reconnaissance walk, you will be experts in identifying the major reef inhabitants and should feel comfortable to do this quickly in other tasks. Then it's time to head back to the lab for a quick safety lecture to cap off the first evening. As the new day begins, we get you back in the classroom to begin your official lecture series. Then it is time to take full advantage of this beautiful marine park and get back out onto the reef, this time with your faces in the water. For work health and safety reasons, a snorkelling test is compulsory, but extremely easy to complete. One staff member will swim out 100 metres and all you have to do is swim around them and back to shore. Your name will then be ticked off to allow you to enjoy the deep water snorkel off the boat, which we'll try to organise for your free time. Think of this not as a test, but another exploration of the reef. And keep your eyes peeled for some of the reef's larger creatures who may come to visit you. This turtle kept Matt company at the turnaround point. Once you have completed this and enjoyed a nice swim, it's back onto land and back to work.
The academic staff will prepare all of the algae that you collected from the reef flat the day before, separating it into as many different types as possible to give you a good variety. Here you will learn to identify the major species of red, green and brown algae that are typically found out on the Heron Island Reef. This is no easy task and sometimes even the tutors debate about the identification of what has been collected. So then it's over to you. Using the dichotomous identification keys and the expertise of your tutor, you will soon become experts in identifying algae. These new skills combined with the afternoon you had on the reef flat identifying corals and other macrofauna will have well equipped you for the transect task the next day. The transect will take you most of the day. As the tide goes out, the lemon sharks will leave the shallows and you can begin the walk out to the reef. Your tutor will give you an introduction to the purpose of this task and together you will work out the best way to undertake it. You will be guided out on a compass bearing to the very edge of the reef flat, the rampart, from where you will work back towards the shore. Your group will set up a series of stations 20 metres apart at which you will identify all the corals, algae, and miscellaneous fauna within a one metre radius. This is where your previous practice will come in handy. Your group will work together using viewing tubes and identification charts to note the differences in coral coverage and diversity, algal density, and percentage of exposed sediment across the reef flat. You will notice the incoming and disappearance of characteristic taxa from the outer rampart to the inner reef flat near shore. You never know what you might see through your viewing tube out on the reef. The epaulette shark, the jumping lima bivalve with its long tentacles, or if you're really lucky, the majestic Spanish dancer. You'll be even luckier if she dances for you. This large marine sea slug is a rare sight on Heron Island, but a real delight to watch. As you wrap up your transect, heading back in towards the shore, I urge you to take a moment to appreciate the stunning sunset over the Great Barrier Reef before you head back for a lecture on reef evolution and lab work into the evening. Work at the research station can be pretty intense at times, but you'll have some spare time to enjoy the island for yourself. Heron Island has a great variety of bird life for bird watching, such as the buff banded rails and the knotty terns. There are even some cute little reptiles on the island. You may prefer to take a walk around the island and swim in the warm shallows. Then again, you may just need a good rest. However, the best thing to do in such a beautiful place is to grab your mask and snorkel and explore the areas available to you under the water. Have a look for this tessellated wobbegong under the jetty. The variety of marine life found at Heron Island never ceases to impress. As the sun is setting, you will find even more species come out from hiding and the reef comes alive with feeding time. While you're on the island, 
you may get a chance to speak to some of the researchers who are also studying the reef and its inhabitants. Hi, my name is Paolo Momigliano and I am a PhD student from Macquarie University. I work on grey reef sharks on the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. This is Heron Island, a southern island in the Great Barrier Reef. We've been here for the last few days catching grey reef sharks in order to get genetic samples. Uh, reef sharks are an extremely par important part of the ecosystem. They are apex predators and if you remove them, they might be co unpredictable and very um, dramatic consequences on the whole ecosystem. Uh, what we're doing is that we are taking genetic samples in order from population across all of Australia and other regions in the Indo-Pacific uh, in order to understand how these populations are connected to each other. And this information are going to help us understand how to better manage these species in the future in order to avoid possible future collapses of greater shark population. Another task that you will complete is a sediment analysis. During the transect walk out on the reef, your group will have collected two sediment samples. One from the rampart and one from the transition zone between the inner and outer reef flat. Back in the lab, your samples will be dried in the oven and put through a series of sieves. The separated fractions and varying grain sizes will give you an idea about differences in sediment composition between the samples. The use of picking equipment and stereo microscopes will help you with this task. A third sample for sediment analysis will also be provided from the channel, which needs to be collected using a spring-loaded grab sampler off the side of the boat. This small dredge is lowered from the boat to a depth of about 30 metres the sample taken and hauled back up again. This is no easy task. This sample is usually taken at the same time as a plankton haul. Microscopic zooplankton and phytoplankton floating in the water column are collected both during the day and the night time. They are collected for you using a large net which is dragged behind the boat near the surface and collects the plankton into a container. Back in the lab, your plankton samples will be identified and taxonomic abundance and diversity of the two samples noted. If the weather permits and the seas are calm enough for the boats, we will take you out for a deep water snorkel off the edge of the reef. The boats will head out of the harbour, past the shipwreck, and out to one of the impressive snorkel sites on the outer reef. With your buddy and the staff, you can drift along and enjoy the warm, clear water with its abundance of life. You can see reef sharks, turtles, large schools of fish like the giant trevally, colourful corals, and large rays and shovelnose sharks. You have been studying and mapping the landscape of the reef flat, but once you drop off the edge of the reef flat, the landscape changes again, 
and this is your opportunity to see how. The deep water snorkel is one of the best parts of the Heron Island trip and it will be an experience you will not forget. A surprising amount of diversity actually lives in the sediment itself. The in-fauna task involves a bucket full of sediment from the reef flat, a tray, some seawater and a pair of tweezers. In your group you will work to carefully and systematically search through the sediment for tiny animals. And where better to complete the task than on the beach in the sunshine? Taking extra care not to squash any of these little guys, you'll be searching for tiny worms, mollusks, crustaceans, and even tiny sea cucumbers. The in fauna that you have picked out and identified with the help of your tutor will be used in an eco-space analysis and food web to help you understand not only the diversity on the reef, but also below the surface, where so many more niches are filled. While on the island, each group will also choose a project to complete independently of their tutor's help. The following is a great example. We've been given the task to invent our own experiment for our independent group project and we decided that we want to go out into the reef and take a closer look at some of the symbiotic relationships out there. So we're going to go see what we can find. So for our independent group project, we're looking at the pea crab and its association with this algae called Chlorodesmus. Here's the pea crab right here. There are actually a few that you can see in there. Um, we're looking at their association and why they um, hang out together, whether it's for feeding strategies or predation or possibly whether the crabs are drawn by other crabs' chemical cues. Um, we're not sure and we're aiming to figure that out. In these three tanks, we're testing the crab's preference for algae types, Schnuspora, Sargassum, Chlorodesmus, Calerpa. We're testing 20 crabs and seeing how long it takes them to pick a corner. In this tank, we're testing whether the crab has a preference towards going after other crabs. One of these clumps has a crab in it, the others do not, and we see how long it takes them to choose. Based off of our first field work and lab data, we think that the crabs are seeking shelter under the algae from predators, but that's irrespective of taxa or species. The last field task that you will complete is a quadrat map on the other side of the island to the research station. On the way, you will pass through the Personia forests and see many different bird species, like the knotty tern, that inhabit the island. The dense greenery of the centre of the island is a beautiful contrast to the beach and reef. But you will have to be careful where you are walking to avoid stepping in the numerous shearwater burrows underfoot. At North Beach, with your quadrat squares, viewing buckets, ID charts and notebooks, you will head out onto the reef flat at low tide. And with the help of your tutor, choose an area of interest for your five by five metre quadrat. This should be an area of interesting diversity with a decent cover of coral and algae and as much other macrofauna as possible. Using the quadrat square across the area, you will draw in the outlines of everything you find in that space, such as live or dead coral heads, large shells, and the living epifauna. While one person does this, the rest of the group will work on identifying what they see. Corals, algae, tridacna clams, even epaulette sharks. This task will help you to understand how the different modern day fauna in a given area of reef use the space available to them and compare this to how fauna from the Devonian period would have lived, as you will have learnt from assignment one. You will also enjoy the hands-on close interaction 
with a beautiful, weird and wonderful life that inhabits the Great Barrier Reef. At the end of this field excursion, you will leave the island with an extensive understanding of the evolution and diversity of a coral reef environment and its myriad of inhabitants. As a sneak peek to the Bio 379 Reef Evolution and Dynamics Unit, we hope you can appreciate how unique and exciting this learning opportunity is. The passionate staff, modern facilities and stunning location make this undergraduate unit highly enjoyable and rewarding for all who attend. Coral reef ecosystems are amazingly diverse and complex, and after a week at Heron Island, there's no doubt why the Great Barrier Reef is a World Heritage Area. Having the opportunity to come up here to Heron Island and do a course is really amazing. It allows students to really, in great detail, investigate the ecology, the flora, the fauna. The sheer diversity of animal and plant life you see in a marine setting here is almost unsurpassed in the Lower Great Barrier Reef. You can see turtles and sharks, amazing variety of fish. I get to see the, um, put them in the context of the environment in which they exist, and I really get a better understanding of their overall biology. Students need to understand these environments, uh, and the best place to do that is here on Heron Island. I mean, you've got the world's best classroom here. You get a group of students here in an intensive situation, and they learn the theory of coral reefs, and then they actually go out and immerse themselves in it. To look not just at the corals and the fish, but up close at the forams, the algae, the worms in the sediment, and a whole spectrum of animals. Uh, so it's been a good opportunity to do that uh, in an intensive block, uh, all in one go, to, to see how uh, these kind of studies are done in the field. The reef here is not just a picture postcard of corals. The island is alive. I love it here. I love the environment. And every trip just blows me away. The reason I keep coming back is to show students, to teach students. And that's a fantastically rewarding experience, to watch the students turn the lights on in their face and understand um, theory and ecology in a practical sense. Take the opportunity, it's brilliant. I possibly can't walk out on the reef without a Zimmer frame. 